forces kit needs to be as rugged as the military itself. Equipment must pass through rigorous tests, and this is where it's done. So this is the Faraday Test Centre. We're at the BAE Systems Faraday Centre in Kent to see the hardship that forces hardware has to endure. Up first, we're greeted by a helmet in a vibration test lab to see if things come loose after a shake-up. This is one of our two vibration test facilities. And basically we can bolt equipment onto this, the table up here and vibrate up through this axis. Or we can couple this down onto the slip table here and vibrate in this direction too. And what would be the signs this helmet here has failed or is failing a vibration test? So we would monitor lots of things. We'd monitor its electronic performance. So there'd be cables coming out going to test equipment. If something became loose or broke, then you might get a different, a different frequency response. Breaking, hitting a landing, um, firing guns potentially on an aircraft. So there's different vibration um, sequences and profiles for, for all those different things. The next room can mimic any extremes the components might be exposed to, from 140 degrees down to minus 60. So this is the environmental test lab, where we perform things like temperature, altitude, vibration, acceleration, rain tests, pretty much all of the environments that the product will see, temperature, altitude and humidity, all at the same time, which allows us to simulate the profile of an aircraft taking off, getting to altitude, going through the clouds, maybe some moisture, the temperature gets colder, the pressures change. To simulate worst case scenarios, the engineers get creative with their own kind of Russian doll technique. We have a small altitude chamber that we put a product inside and we set that to maybe cockpit pressure, maybe 8,000 feet. We put that inside a large altitude chamber and set the outer chamber to 40,000 feet and then we pop the seal between the two chambers and we equalise. So you're actually working out how it would handle an explosive disaster. Exactly that, exactly that. There's a centrifuge, similar to the ones you see pilots train in to withstand around 9 Gs without passing out. This one hits an astonishing 30 Gs. And in the corner, a shock tower system designed to lift things up and throw them down. That's how you know a helicopter's hook can hold onto its cargo if it takes a knock. This is where we would perform EMC testing, electromagnetic testing. Um, and basically we would put our product on a bench and we would measure how much radiation our equipment gives off to make sure it's below a certain level and won't interact or interfere with another piece of equipment that's on an aircraft. We also split that the other way and we zap RF at our product. The, the room is screened to make sure that, that no interference can come in from the outside world while we're doing the testing. The lab even mimics the electrostatic charge that can build up in humans before we touch things. We're quite lucky in that we, we get to test lots and lots of diverse um, products. Head-up displays, helmets, um, active sticks, uh, mission computers. Um, and then on and the flip of that, we could have someone that comes and wants to test a beverage maker or an oven or a microwave. Once the kit passes through, it can be tried out on flight simulators. Can't get this wrong. The cockpits aren't specific enough for pilots to train on them. They're blank canvases to give a range of different tools a tryout. Each individual piece of kit that I'm handling now has been ideally tested through the systems we've been in before today. Yes, absolutely. So they can handle everything that you know they will need to be able to, and now you're just testing that they can do the job. Absolutely right, yeah. Do you trust me with the landing, or is that out of my hands now? Um. <laughs> At least we know some things can do their job. Tom Sables, Forces News, Kent. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.